We are jumping to chapter seven. That wasn't a mistake. I feel like it fits better in the curriculum if we're talking about, you know, graphing one line in chapter three. Now we're going to be looking at a system. So if I'm graphing two or more, we've seen the case when they're parallel and when we don't have any solutions when they're parallel and if they're perpendicular, what happens with their slopes. So in the other cases, when that's not happening, and even when that is happening, we still need to be able to discuss all of the solutions. So we're going to be solving, solving systems of equations in two variables, so still dealing with a coordinate plane. So many problems can be solved more easily by translating to two equations in two variables. The following is such a system. System of equations. So two equations, two unknowns we want to solve. Where are they both satisfied at the exact same time? So that first example, the little brackets always mean a system in this class. If you see that notation, that's just what it means. If there aren't any words and you just see that bracket with two equations, we're solving that system. So that first system that's given, we have two lines and we're looking for a solution. So a solution of a system of two equations is an ordered pair, since we have both an x and a y, that makes both equations true. Both equations true at the exact same time. So that system, that first one that's given, we have graphed there, and they are intersecting at one point P, 3, 5. So we want to just double check, make sure that the picture is accurate, and that P is actually a solution to both of those equations at the same time. So, it doesn't matter which one we start with in the system. P has to satisfy both of these at the exact same time. So, P is 3, 5. We want to prove that this is actually a solution to the system. So, let's plug it into the first. 3 plus 5, is that really equal to 8? Yes, first one is satisfied. And for the second, 2 times 3 minus 5, is that really equal to 1? So I've got 6 minus 5, yes, and that one is satisfied as well. So we know that, yeah, P is a solution to the system. Satisfies both of them at the exact same time. Tells us the point where they're intersecting. So we could have more systems where we don't have a picture, and we have to prove or tell that it's not a solution to the system at some point. So that's what we're going to look at next. So we want to determine whether 1, 2 is a solution to the system. y equals x plus 1, 2x plus y is equal to 4. So is this point where those two lines are intersecting? So let's see. Is it a solution? I'm going to try into the first equation. So 2 is y, 1 is x. That one's satisfied. 2 plus another 2, does that equal 4? Yes. So I know that 1, 2 is a solution. That's where it's intersecting. Okay, if we don't have specified x and y like we're used to, again, it goes alphabetically. So when we're determining that second, is negative 3, 2 a solution to the system with p's and q's? So, which one comes first in the alphabet is what we assign uh, for the variable. So, p comes before q. So, our order pair looks like this. p is the first coordinate, q is the second. So, let's plug them in and see. So, p is the first coordinate, so I'm looking at minus 3 plus 2, is that equal to minus 1? Yes. And we also want to check into the second equation, because it has to satisfy both at the exact same time if it's a solution to the system. So, q is 2 and p is minus 3. We're asking, is that really equal to 4? So, I've got negative 9 plus 2. That's not equal to 4. So what does that tell me about this point? It's not a solution. It does lie on the first line because it did satisfy that equation, but it's not lying on the second. 
So if I have my two lines that are intersecting at this point, you know, my first line, maybe it's this one, and that point is satisfied somewhere here. But it's not satisfying the second one because it's not touching that at all. So in this case, not a solution. And we have a good idea of what the picture is going to look like. They might be intersecting, and there is a point that's satisfying the one line. It's not satisfying the other. So go ahead and take those two tries. Determine whether each point is a solution to those given systems. All right, so as we were plugging in these points into the different equations of the system, what happened? Is this a solution to this system? So x and y are given to us, so it's easy to figure out which coordinate belongs to which variable. 2 is for x, minus 3 is for y. Is that really true? So I'm looking at 8, minus 6 gives me 2. That one was satisfied. And 2 times 2 minus 3, is that equal to 1? 4 minus 3 is 1. Yes. So this was a solution to the system. Satisfies both lines at the exact same time. It's where they're intersecting. For the second one, we have A and B alphabetically. A comes first. So that's what our coordinate pairs are looking like. So as we plug these in, is this one satisfied? First one is true. 40 divided by 2 is 20. And we want to look at the second line as well. 40 minus 20, is that equal to 60? It is not. So this was not a solution to this system. Lies on one of the lines, doesn't lie on the other. So we're going to look at solving systems graphically. In these cases, we're just proving yes or no, is it a solution? But if we're just given the lines, how can we figure out where that's happening? So we're going to look at graphing first, since we're comfortable with that from Chapter 3. So when we're solving a system of two equations by graphing, we graph both equations, find the coordinates of their intersection if they exist. If they do, if they're not intersecting, what kind of lines do we have? Things that are parallel to each other. So we'll see that case as well. So the first one, I want to solve the system. x plus y equals 6, and x equals y plus 2. There's a lot of different ways that we can go about graphing these. We can solve for the y equals mx plus b form. We can plug in for the intercepts. It doesn't really matter. But I'm going to label the first one y1, the second one y2, just so we can talk about the different equations without having to say the equation x plus y equals 6. I think I'm going to go ahead and solve for y so we can graph these. So the first one, to get y on its own, what do we need to do? Subtract x from both sides, and we're there. For the second one, I need to... Do what? I want y on its own, I need to subtract 2. So y is x minus 2. So we can go ahead and graph those, and with these new labels, we can draw them in the same plane and throw that easy label on it. So the first one, it has y-intercept through 0, 6. 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6. From there, I move according to my slope, down 1, over 1, down 1, over 1. Okay, or we could go up 1, back one. And my picture is not very accurate, but you get the idea. It's linear. This is what it's looking like. So that was y1. And the second one, where is its y-intercept happening at? 0 minus 2. And from there, we move according to the slope. Up 1 over 1. Up 1 over 1. Okay. So with your coordinates, coordinate planes, the grids, get out a straight edge, so we want the most accurate uh, representation of these lines as possible. So, where are they intersecting? At what point? So, I'm looking at 1, 2, 3, 4, up 2. 4, 2, is that a solution to this system? Okay. So, if our picture was off and you weren't quite convinced that it was exactly at 4, 2, how could you show that this intersection is the solution to the system? 
plug it into both of them, show that it actually works, and it's true. So we'll do that. In 2, y1, whichever form doesn't matter. But I'm trying to see if 4, 2 is a solution. So is 2 really equal to negative 4 plus 6? Yep. And for the second one, is 2 really equal to 4 minus 2? Yes. So both of them are satisfied at the exact same time. 4, 2 is a solution. That's where they're intersecting. So y1 and y2 intersect at 4, 2. We proved it graphically. We showed it algebraically. All right. Next, another system. I'm just going to cut it off so we don't get confused. X is equal to 2. Y is equal to minus 3. We'll test your skills with graphing those vertical and horizontal lines. So again, I'm going to give them some labels so I can be lazy when I draw the pictures. But what are we looking at for that first line? X is equal to 2. So we have an X coordinate. It's going to have to have, you know, an X intercept, which means we're intersecting the X axis. So we're talking about a vertical, vertical line at 2. So we'll go ahead and draw that in. First one at 2, y1. And the second one then is going to be you know, horizontal at minus 3. Because we have a y intercept. Man, my pictures are not very good. <laughs> Pretend they're straight. And where are they intersecting? So what's our, our x coordinate here? 2. And what's our y coordinate? Minus 3. Comes straight forward from the system. And again, we can check by plugging it in. In the first equation, is 2 equal to 2? Yeah. In the second, is minus 3 equal to minus 3? Yeah. So those cases are super simple, as long as you get the orientation of the lines correct. All right. One for you. Go ahead and solve the system by graphing. So where is that proposed solution? We want to figure out where are they intersecting. And my axis is blue, so I'm going to put that one away. Okay. So we have to get y on its own. Well, there's just one route to go. To be able to graph y1. So what did you have to do if you went this route? I want y on its own. We need to subtract 2x from both sides. We could go ahead and graph that now. And y2, we want to do the same. So we need to subtract 8 from both sides, divide by 2. So y is 1 half x minus 4. Okay. So once we have them in that form, we can go ahead and graph pretty easily. You could have also solved for the intercepts. That would get you there as well. So first line. We have a y-intercept at 0, 1, and from there I move according to my slope down 2 over 1, down 2 over 1, or up 2, back 1. It's always that rise over run. So this is my first line. And the second one went through the y-intercept 0, 1, 2, 3, 4. From there I go up 1 over 2. Uh, hey, that's nice. Up 1 over 2. So, where was that solution? Where is that occurring at? So, at the intersection, 2 minus 1, 2, 3. 2 minus 3 is our solution. And again, if you thought your picture was a little bit off, if you're drawn without grids like I am, how can we prove that that is the solution? Plug it back into both, or in the original, they're all equivalent, to be sure that it satisfies both at the exact same time. 